Mourners gathering to honor and remember Samuel DuBose with prayers during a candlelight vigil on the steps of the Hamilton County Courthouse in Cincinnati. Ray Tensing is accused of killing DuBose on July 19th and has since been indicted on murder charges and fired from the University of Cincinnati Police Force. Now he wants his job back. Joining us now to discuss this and talk about it all, Richard St. Paul, defense attorney, and David Bruno, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, and trial attorney. So, okay, uh, is this a crazy uh, request? You're charged with murder, and the first thing you say is, I want my job back. Look, the contract is con controlling. every. Most police officers, police departments have a collective bargaining agreement and there's a process for termination. Depending on what the contract says, if it says that he's entitled to a hearing before termination, guess what? He's entitled to a hearing before termination. David? Yeah, it's important to distinguish between administrative and criminal because this conversation that I'm about to have has nothing to do with the charges being lodged against him for murder. But this individual has rights in this employment context. Here, what the Cincinnati University did is he, they just terminated him. They brought him in, they said goodbye. What they should have done and what they had to do under the collective bargaining agreement is serve him written notice of the charges, describe as to why he's being terminated, and give him a hearing. Those things were not done. And that's why the union came out and filed a grievance this week. And believe it or not, they're gonna be successful. They're going to be successful in this grievance. Why but, would you want your job back when you might be forced, as you both talk about and know as attorneys, you might be called to testify about that? It's very simple. It's, it's he needs a standard of living. He needs income. So while it may not be he wants to be on patrol, he wants to have access to money so that he can take care of himself, his family, maybe even pay his defense attorneys if necessary. So that's really what it's about is preserving his lifestyle. But David, couldn't they call him to testify as to why he should keep his job? And does he really want to talk at this point? He shouldn't be talking. He shouldn't be making any additional statements. And I believe we've heard enough from him on the MVRs and, and the cameras. Um, but, but what's important here is this procedural defect could be remedied okay so w because they didn't give notice that could be corrected and in the end he will lose his job they just have to go about it in the right way and follow the right procedure that's that, I definitely I agree with that look at in the end they're going to say that this is the reason he's being terminated he's not going to win he can appeal and appeal and even go to arbitration which is going to take four to six months but because of the egregiousness of this uh, crime that he's been accused of is more than likely, more likely than not, he'll be terminated at the end. Okay, let's Absolutely. get back to, you now we've talked about the, the termination or as to why he was terminated, and that's of course the University of Cincinnati was probably saying, whoa, whoa, this is a very intense video here, we've got to let you go, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about the collective bargaining, he'll go back and uh, he'll still have to face the day of going to court. What do you think his defense will have to do? Well, I see two defenses. First is going to be the self-defense, and that is whether or not he feared for his life and as a result fired and shot and killed. The other issue is going to be whether or not, even, even if it wasn't self-defense, whether or not it was reckless conduct as opposed to purposeful conduct. In fact, if you look at the indictment against him, count two is the manslaughter charge, the passion provocation. So if he, if he fails on self-defense, there may be an argument in which we call imperfect self-defense mm -hmm. where he doesn't have the purpose and, and the jury finds recklessness. Let me get a quick word in there, Richard. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's going to be self-defense. He feared for his life. And again, it's going to be uh, the reasonable, his reasonable standard that he feels is subjective, not objective, and also mitigating from murder in the first degree, which costs, which has more, more time, murder in the second degree, which will cost him more time, to more of a manslaughter, which he would argue mitigating circumstances. For example, I wasn't properly trained and aggravating circumstances. I was in fear for my life. So you're talking about either getting off for self-defense or you're talking about lessening the murder. You're going up against charge. a very qualified district attorney who, after 30 years of experience, said, I've never seen anything this asinine. But that will not be relevant in a court no. of law. But what He'll he have will to produce in a court of law will be extremely relevant. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And remember, and this is a jury who was going to look at a police officer as giving them the benefit of doubt that they wouldn't do something like this unless they thought that uh, they were in fear for their yeah, life. It's so going to be a case that the world system. will be watching, no doubt. Uh, yes. Richard St. Paul, David Bruno, thank you. Always enjoy your expertise. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Kelly. All right. Julie. All right.